Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at amount of charge, electric field strength, electric field strength as a vector, and then we'll finish with the summary. Let's think about the amount of charge an object can possess. An object can be positively charged, negatively charged, or have no overall charge. And here we have examples of an object that is positively charged, a neutral object, which has no charge, and a negatively charged object. As well as the type of charge, an object will have an amount of charge that can be measured. The amount of charge possessed by this object can be measured in a similar way that we can measure the mass of an object. Two objects may both have a positive charge, but one may have more positive charge than the other one. So this one on the right has more positive charge than the object on the left. And we can quantify this difference in charge by measuring it. Equally, two objects may both have a negative charge, but one may have a greater negative charge than the other one. So this one on the right may have a greater amount of negative charge than the object on the left. And again, we can quantify this difference by measuring it. The symbol that we use for charge is Q, and the standard unit for charge is the Coulomb C. So this object possesses some charge Q, and we measure it in units of C. If an object is positively charged, its charge takes a positive sign, while if it is negatively charged, its charge takes a negative sign. So the Q for this object would be positive, whereas the Q for this object would be negative. For example, we can quantify the charge on an electron and on a proton. So we know that a proton is positively charged, and the charge on a proton Q is equal to plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. An electron is negatively charged, and the magnitude of its charge is the same as that of the proton. So we say that Q is equal to minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 C. Now we're going to discuss how we quantify electric field strength. We know that if a charged object enters an electric field, it's going to experience an electrostatic force. So here we've drawn the electric field lines, and this object with a positive charge is going to enter the electric field and experience an electrostatic force. The force that an object in an electric field experiences at a particular point is proportional to the object's charge. So let's call the force that an object experiences at a particular point F. And this force F is proportional to the charge Q. So we can say that the force is equal to a constant of proportionality, which we're going to call K, times Q. In the same electric field, an object with a greater charge will experience a greater force than an object with a smaller charge. So let's imagine these two objects in the same electric field, but one has a greater charge and one has a lesser charge. And the lesser charge has a smaller force on it, whereas the greater charge has a greater force on it. Different electric fields exert different amounts of force on the same amount of charge. So let's imagine we now have the same charge, but different strengths of electric field. So this is a stronger field, and this is a weaker field. The weaker field will exert less force on the charge, whereas the stronger field will exert a stronger force. We can use this fact to define a quantity called the electric field strength. The electric field strength at a point in an electric field is the force per unit charge on a small positively charged object at that point due to the field. So the electric field strength at a certain point is going to be the force F exerted on a certain charge divided by that charge. We can use this definition to form an equation for electric field strength. This equation is as follows. Electric field strength E 
is equal to force F on a small positive charge, which is measured in newtons, divided by the magnitude of charge, which is measured in coulombs. And therefore, we can see that the unit for electric field strength is newtons per coulomb. For example, we can find the electric field strength at a point if we know that a proton with a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs experiences a force of 4 times 10 to the minus 15 newtons at this point due to the electric field. So we know that the charge Q of the proton is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and it experiences a force equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 15 newtons. And what we want to find is the electric field strength E. And we know that this is equal to F divided by Q. And therefore we can substitute in the values we were given. So the force is 4 times 10 to the minus 15 newtons. And the charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And therefore the electric field strength is equal to 25,000 newtons per coulomb. An important thing to note is that when we define electric field strength, we use a small charge. So when we're defining the electric field strength around this large negative charge here, we have to be careful to use a much smaller charge in order to define the strength of the electric field. And the reason for this is to make sure that the charge does not have an effect on the electric field with a larger charge. So the charge will have its own electric field but because it is so small, its field will be much weaker. And therefore, we can ignore its effect on the larger electric field. Now we're going to think about the vector nature of the electric field strength. The electric field strength at a point is defined as the force per unit charge on a small positively charged object at that point in the field. So the electric field E can be defined in terms of the charge Q and the force on that charge F by the following equation. E equals the force divided by the charge. We can rearrange our definition of electric field strength to find the force on a known charge in an electric field of known strength. So rearranging this equation to make force the subject, we get that force F is equal to electric field strength E times charge Q. Since force is a vector quantity and charge is a scalar quantity, electric field strength must also be a vector quantity. So here we have a vector equation with force, which is a vector, being equal to electric field strength times Q. And since we know that charge Q is a scalar, electric field strength must also be a vector. So we know that electric field strength points in the same direction as the force on a positively charged object in the electric field. So here we have our positively charged object and the force F on it is in the same direction as the electric field strength E. Electric field strength points in the opposite direction to the force on a negatively charged object in the field. So here we can see that we have our negative charge Q and the electric field strength is pointing in this direction and the force on this negatively charged object is in the opposite direction. For example, if an electron of charge minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs experiences a force of 5 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons from left to right, we can find the magnitude and direction of the electric field strength. We know that the force on the electron is equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 16 from left to right, and the charge of the electron is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So our electric field strength E is equal to this force F times 10 to the minus 16 newtons, and we're going to divide it by the charge which is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And so we find that our electric field strength is minus 3,125 newtons per coulomb, or to two significant figures, 
minus 3.1 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. The minus sign on electric field strength simply tells us that the electric field strength points in the opposite direction to our positive force. So because we defined our force to be positive from left to right, therefore the electric field strength points in the opposite direction and is in the negative direction. And you can see that this matches our statement that the electric field strength points in the opposite direction to the electrostatic force on a negative charge. So for a negative charge, the vector for electric field strength points in the opposite direction to the force. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.